Good morning, First Baptist Church Aztec. We are so glad you're here today. If this is your first time visiting, we would ask that you take the tear-off portion of the bulletin, fill it out, and then take it to the First Cafe area where you can meet with Pastor Mike and Cindy after church. You'll also be able to get your favorite candy bar and soda. If you're looking for a church home, this is a great place. Now let's take a look at what's happening here at First Baptist. We are updating the whole church directory, and we need your help with this. If your phone number or address has changed, we need you to fill out the bulletin flap and then place it in the offering plate. Or you can call Sue at the church. The number is 505-334-6833. Another way that you can help is by making sure that we get new family photos of everyone. So, even if you've updated in the last year, we also need photos of each individual of your family so that we can update our church database. Now, Teresa Day is going to be taking pictures from 8.30 to 9 each Sunday morning and after worship on each of the Sundays in September. So, if you can help out with this, we sure would appreciate your help. How about a free lunch? One week from now, on September the 8th, there is going to be a training here at church we would like you to join in. It's going to take place from 12.30 to 2.30. You'll have lunch, then we will have AED equipping, hands-only CPR training, and first aid training for trauma victims. Everyone is welcome to attend. We are collecting items for Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child brings good news and great joy to children all around the world through gift-filled boxes. To find out how you can help, please contact Sarah Shockley or Janelle Leslie or go to firstaztec.org backslash OCC. Fall Fest is just two months away and it's growing every year. So anything you can do to help would be greatly appreciated. We are looking for candy donations. And another planning meeting is going to be scheduled in the near future. Watch for it. On September 15th, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Now take a look to your right and take a look to your left real quick. Do you see anybody that is missing that you know? Drop them a text right now and invite them to join you for Sunday school, for worship, and for the Lord's Supper so that we can worship together as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. For more information about upcoming events, please check your bulletin or go to firstaztec.org. Once again, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Now, we would ask that you open up your heart and see what the Lord is going to do in the rest of the service. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me.
What a fun song. I hope you guys were smiling when you sang that. I don't see how you can keep from it. That's a, that's a great song of truth, how Jehovah Jireh cares for us, provides for us, takes care of us, meets all of our needs. Amen? Amen. I am so glad you're here today. And uh, we get to continue in worship uh, by baptizing a mom and a daughter. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I'll we'll ask these two ladies to step down in here with me. This first one is Stephanie. And then Alicia, and they're both going to come down here in the water at the same time. Perfect. Just like that. Water's not too bad, is it? Fish kind of nibble on your toes a little bit. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it used to be that way. The turtles and the fish and someone would have to stand guard, watch the snakes, make sure they stayed away. I'm good with that. We just get to do it inside now. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> Stephanie, let me ask you a couple of questions. H have you come to a place where you've asked Jesus to save you? Yes. To forgive you of the wrong things that you've done? Yes. And you've turned away from those things and you've asked Him to be the boss of your life, correct? Yes. And because you have done that, you now have the assurance that you will go to heaven when you die. And actually, as we're going to be talking about today's message is... You actually have the assurance of living a full and complete life right here on this earth because of Jesus. So Stephanie, it's my pleasure, my honor upon your profession of faith to baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of His death and raised to walk in the newness of life with God. All right, swap spots. And Alicia, how long have you been her daughter? Been 20 years. 20 years? All right, awesome. Let me ask you a couple of questions, all right? Okay. Uh, the other day when we visited, did you ask Jesus to come into your life and to save you? Yes. And you ask him to forgive you the wrong things that you've done? Yes. And be the boss of your life? Yes. And when you repented or you turned away from your sin and asked him to be your boss, he came in and uh, he honored your prayer. And you know now that no matter what happens, he'll always be with you and you're going to go to heaven when this short life is over. Yes. Awesome. Well, Alicia, it's my honor to baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death and raised to walk in the newness of life. Good job. You guys go right that way. Awesome. Proud of both of them. You know, a new, a new life in Christ. Do you, re, do you remember what it was like to have that sin on your shoulders? To have that sin just bearing down on you? Do you remember what it was like to... Just walk in that dark fog of fear and fear of death. I praise God for freedom. No longer do we walk in a fear of death. No longer do we walk in a drudgery of sin. But we have a new life. And this picture right here, baptism doesn't save us. But baptism is a picture of of what is transferred in our life. The, the, the death, the dying of self, the being spiritually buried and the raised to walk in a brand new life, but it's also a picture of the death and the bear and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you been baptized? Following your salvation, following the time that, that you became a follower of Christ, you had that life-changing experience. Have you been baptized since then? And if the answer to that is no, then let's get that made. Let's get that right. So that you're no longer walking in disobedience. But you can walk in the fullness of Christ and all that He has for you. Maybe, maybe you'll get to share the gospel with someone this week. Maybe you will get to share the fact that we all deserve eternal separation from Christ. 
but because of the grace of God and the faith that He gives us as a gift, we can repent of our sin, turn away from our sin, and turn to Christ and trust Him only. If you haven't yet done that, then today's your day. And I wonder who will be next to stand in these baptismal waters. Let's ask the Father that question together. Lord, together right now, we ask you who will be next. Is it someone sitting here that they need to follow you in baptism? Is it someone sitting here that they need to repent of their sin? Placing their full faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone for their salvation and their eternal life. Father, maybe it's someone that you're going to bring into our lives this week as we go to work or as we go to school or a neighbor that you'll bring into our life or maybe a stranger on the street. Father, who will be next to follow you in baptism? May we be sensitive to those around us. And may we continue to celebrate Stephanie and Alicia and their new life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Watch this testimony of faith with me, please. Anybody can hear me? We're going to be re reading from Ephesians 1, 3 through 13. If everybody can stand Oops, for the reading of God's Word. Sorry. And just on a side note, if you haven't All seen right. the movie Overcomer, you should probably go see it. It talks about what we're going to be reading in Ephesians. It's a pretty amazing movie. So if you have that opportunity, go see it. Why you pull that one? Thank you so much. And this is also in if you need the Pew Bible. It's on Thank page so 993. Awesome. Okay. Are we good? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ for himself, according to his favor and will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he favored us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he planned in him for the administration of the days of fulfillment to bring everything together in the Messiah, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him we were also made his inheritance, predestined according to the purpose of the one who works out everything in agreement with the decision of his will, so that we who had already put our hope in the Messiah might bring praise to his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in him when you believed, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance for the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. Everybody can bow their heads, please. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise your precious and holy name. Uh, we thank you for your, your holy word, Lord, that gives us direction and guidance. Lord, And we just praise your name for going to the cross and dying for our sins so that we may be made new. And Lord, we just pray and, and ask that you would send us out into this community, Lord, into uh, this state and this, this world, Lord, to spread your message and to tell others of the grace that we have, Lord, and the hope that we have in you. And we just praise your name and we thank you. And we pray for this message today and we pray for Pastor Mike and that all that he was, has done for us, Lord. And we thank you for this wonderful a revival that happened this week. We pray that you would just continue to, to move in our church and move in our community. And we pray these things in your precious name, Jesus.
Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Is this his handprint? Could you please give him his handprint? This morning, we are going to be celebrating the name of Jesus as we worship. Please stay standing if you can. If you can't, please feel free to take a seat. Hey, Watson. Sorry, I was dead. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Best that 
just singing I don't know what that does to you on the inside but there's so much truth there God wants us to know him in an abundant way not in a valley of dry bones not walking around with spiritual cobs cobwebs if you would hanging off of us but he wants us to know him in a new and a fresh way even every day, sometimes in multiple ways throughout the day. How is God making himself known to you? Can, can you, can you tell me just in a, in a word, maybe even a name of God that comes to your mind if you've ever looked at or studied the names of God or you, God, you, God has just made himself known as bloom. What is it? Tell me. Tell me, please. Freedom. Freedom. Hallelujah. Abba. Sustainer. Sustainer. Amen. Provider. 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 A healer. Comforter. The only one worthy. The one true God. Boulder? Molder. molder, the molder, the shaper, the molder. Oh, that's good. Our Lord and Savior. Counselor. Creator. Friend. <coughs> Listen to this list. These are ways from the Word of God that he has made himself known. El Shaddai, which means Lord God Almighty. El Elyon, the Most High God. Adonai, Lord, Master. Yahweh, which means the Lord, the Jehovah. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, my banner. Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. El Olam, the everlasting God. Elohim, God. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, we sang that earlier, didn't we? The Lord will provide. 
Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. We talked about that this week, didn't we? Shalom. Jehovah Sabbath. The Lord of hosts. You see, we must not put our God in a box. <coughs> he wants to be known in these ways, the ways that you said, and the ways that we are discovering more about Him moment by moment throughout every day when we slow down we go, God, I want to know you more. Father in heaven, as we continue to worship you, as we continue to worship your holy name, teach us. Teach us more about you. Teach us who you are. Teach us, oh God, how you want to reveal yourself to us in even ways that maybe we have once known but forgot. Maybe ways we have never yet experienced you. Oh God, make yourself known. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, oh God, so that our hearts can be softened. And Father, if we don't think our hearts need to be softened, Father, may we repent. Because none of us are perfect in this place. Father, as Garrett said a while ago, you are the molder of our souls, of our lives. <coughs> God, may we continue to know you in new ways. In Jesus' name, amen. And your
should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender.
God and I surrender to your way. Go ahead and be seated. Please, thank you. I, uh, want to begin by bragging on you, if I may. Hope you don't mind your pastor bragging on you. You guys, through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, uh, our church family blessed Jim and Pam. Uh, let me make sure I say this correctly so I don't... With uh, 3,283 dollars. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, praise God. That's right. And we do praise God because He's the one that provides. And I, you know, we, we don't give unless the Spirit prompts us like that. And I, I, I just praise you for your sensitivity to the Spirit's leadership. Um, that's amazing. I praise God for you and with you for what God accomplished through you and what He accomplished last week. Um, it was good. It was good. The title of this morning's message is What Kind of Life Are We Choosing to Live? What kind of life are we choosing to live? And if you haven't turned there already, turn to uh, John, the Gospel of John. If you're uh, opening up your Bible, right in the, it's going to be right in the middle, right about the middle, somewhere in through there is a Matthew, and you go to your right, and, you, and then you'll find uh, Matthew, then Mark, and then Luke, John, and go to John chapter 10, uh, verse 9. Do you realize that you and I make a choice on what kind of life we're living? Now, some of you may go, oh, no, Mike, you, you, you know, no, no, I don't make that choice. Uh, circumstances, coincidences, all of that makes up, makes the choice on how I live my life. Mm, no, no. We, we make decisions, we make choices on how and, and what kind of life we live. No person makes that choice for us. No person. You and I make this choice continually. As a matter of fact, uh, sometimes all day, every day, sometimes moment by moment, second by second, you and I make the choice of what kind of life we choose to live. Amen? Amen? Well, make sure you're with me. And that's really what we're going to look at this morning. Is the fact, the fact that as a follower of Christ, our submission to the Father, or lack thereof, is part of our choosing. And that will dictate oftentimes what kind of life we choose to live. Before we go any further, let's pray. Father in heaven,
Oh, Lord. Church, let me ask you a question with your heads bowed. With your heads bowed. Do you choose to hear from God today? If you do, would you raise your hand up? I want to hear from God today. Raise your hand up if you do. If you're here, leave your hand up for just a moment. If you're here and you go, yeah, I want to hear from God, raise your hand up. So if your hand is not up, you're telling me you don't want to hear from God, and that's, that's fine. That's your choice. Leave your hand up for just a second. I just want to see where we are. Okay. Awesome. Father in heaven, with our hands held, just those, those that had their hands raised, um, God, we want to hear from you. That's our desire. That is our choice. <laughs> we, oh God, desire to hear from you. The Father, for uh, those that did not raise their hand, I, I ask that you soften their hearts. And I thank you for their honesty. And I thank you for their transparency before your throne. But if they don't know you, God, save their souls. Save their souls today. If they are your child, they are your son or daughter, then God soften their hearts so they would want to hear from their Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In John chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, if you got it, say, I got it. Jesus says, I am the gate if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And I will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Now, that's what mine says, have it in abundance. How does your translation end that right there? Okay, uh, I, I heard fullness. Fullness. More abundantly. And what did you say? A satisfying life. To the. To the fill. To the full. To the full. Until it over. Wow. Until it overflows. That's awesome. Anybody have anything else? It's all right. It's just a. A, a, a distraction. God is good. Um, that's the type of life, that overflowing, that fullness, that abundance. That's the type of life that as your pastor, I want you to choose. You make that choice. I want you to choose that. Can I force you to choose that type of life? Yes or no? Nope. Nope. But I can pray for you. And, and it's my prayer that you will choose that type of life before you walk out of this time together this morning. You see, in verse 9, Jesus refers to himself at the as the gate. He is the gate. Now, is a gate to keep something in or keep something out? Exactly. Exactly. And so Jesus being the gate, he makes it where you can enter in to his presence. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. You see, in order to be saved, you have to enter in one way, and that is through the gate. Not everybody desires to go through the gate. Not everybody desires to be saved. I don't get that. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have a personal relationship with the creator of the world. The one that loves you so much that he sent his one and only son. Now hear me very carefully. He sent his one and only son to this earth that if you were the only person in existence, Jesus still would have died, came and died for you. That's how much he loves you. 
But you have to enter through the gate. Because the gate keeps out and the gate, the gate allows in. It's an amazing truth from the Word of God. Jesus saved us to have a relationship with He and the Father. And, and to find pasture. In other words, to find that life to the fullest, the complete and the abundant life. It's all through Jesus. Not only does Jesus keep people out, but Jesus keeps people safe. You know, it's kind of like Jesus is setting boundaries. He says, I am the gate. This is a boundary. If you would like to enter in, you come through me. That's the only way. You and I will only experience the fullness of the Spirit of God, a full life on this earth, and eternal life in heaven through Jesus Christ. In John 14, verse 6, here's what the Word of God says. In John 14, 6, it says this. Jesus says of Himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father Except through me. You cannot, you and I cannot get to heaven in any other way. You and I cannot experience a true life here on this earth any other way. Thinking that you and I will just earn our way to heaven. Be good enough, luck our way in, hope that somehow our, our good deeds outbalance our bad deeds. These are all lies from Satan. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you this. I, I just think you can't get much clearer than this. You, you can't get much clearer than this. You, you see this? This right here, these two pictures, this picture right here, the, the red guy, that would represent me before I accepted Christ, before I became a follower of Christ, before I entered the gate. All that black, you see, that was the sin that I had in my life. I had a friend that came into my life, his name was Robert, and Robert shared with me, he said, Mike, God, this would be God right here, the shininess on this side. He says, God cannot allow sin into his presence. If he did, heaven would no longer be heaven. God cannot allow sin into his presence. God cannot allow sin into heaven. There is no way. Then all the yuckiness of earth would infiltrate heaven. It can't be. But God knew that our separation would be real. So he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place, to pay the penalty for our sins, to purchase a place in heaven for us. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves me. When Jesus had those nails driven through his, his hands and his feet, that wasn't all that he experienced. Having the crown on, pushed down on his head, the crown of thorns pushed down on his head. Anybody here ever got a, a splinter in their finger? Will, you, you actually stepped on a nail last week, didn't you? Or two weeks ago? Last week? That hurt a little bit, didn't it? It smarted, yes. Yes. Uh, ouch, right? We think about stepping on a nail, we go, Ouch. He even told me of a, of a nail that once, not this one, but that penetrated his foot, came all the way through. <laughs> Tap, I'm done, you know. Before Jesus had the nails drove through his hands and feet, before he had the crown of thorns placed on his head, he was stripped naked. He was ridiculed. He was blindfolded. He was beat. 40 lashes with a cat of nine tails 
which is a, a whip, if you would, a, a whip with chunks of pottery and rocks in the end of it. And the people that would do the whipping were trained and they had practiced so that when the extent of the whip got right where it needed to be, they knew when to pull back. And so it would literally attach into the skin. And when they pulled, chunks of flesh would come out. Now we say, oh, that's so gross. No, hear me. Hear me. That's love. That's love. Everybody say love. love. That's love. He did that for you. And for your schoolmate, that's a pain in the keister. And for your coworker who is foul mouthed and rude. And for the neighbor. And for the other people in your life that you just go, oh, I wish that God would change my circumstances so I would have better people around me. Maybe we need to look at it a different way. Maybe you're the light that is shining so bright in the middle of those circumstances so those people can come to know the love of God. But when Jesus breathed His last breath on the cross, His friends came and took Him down and placed Him into a grave and on the third day, the stone got rolled away and out walked Jesus. Then for the next 40 days, six weeks, Jesus continued to appear before His friends, His disciples. He walked with them and He ate with them. He made them breakfast. He visited with them. He hung out with them. He continued to teach them. When my friend Robert shared that with me and a whole lot more, I realized I had a decision to make. You see, I, I knew about Jesus, but I'd never had a life-changing experience with Jesus. And so I realized that I could stay right here, right where, I, right where I was. This would represent me. I could choose to stay there, or I could choose to cross the bridge to eternal life, asking Jesus to save me, to forgive me, and be the boss of my life. And that's what I did on that day. I told God, God, what I deserve for one of my sins, let alone all of them, is eternal separation from you. The Bible says for the wages of sin or what we earn for our sin is death. That's death and hell. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Since the day that I entered through the gate, ha have I been perfect or said all the right things or done all the right things? Oh, no, 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 no. But I know this for certain. If I was to die today, I would go to heaven and have eternal life, not because of anything I have done, but because I have entered through the gate. Look at verse 9. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. The only way to have a relationship with the Father is through Jesus Christ. The only way to have a full and complete life here on earth and eternal life hereafter is by turning away from your sins, repenting of your sins, turning to Christ and asking Him to save you, to forgive you, and to be the boss of your life. What is a boss? Terry, what's a boss? Someone that's in charge. That's right. Someone that's in charge. And so what you're doing, when you, when you enter through that gate and you ask Jesus to save you and to forgive you, you turn away from your sins and you say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be in charge the rest of my life. I no longer am in charge. Jesus, you are in charge. Now watch, Jesus says he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. 
But when you come in, you become a part of the flock. You become a part of the family, if you would. A, a home right here, First Baptist Church Aztec. You can become a part of the family, part of the home right here. And you go out to find pasture. You go out, it's almost as if to serve. Now you are part of the family. You get to go serve and be the light of the world that Jesus has called us to be. But look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. In other words, the enemy. Does anybody know when a thief is going to come? Nah. We don't know when a thief is going to come. If you knew when a thief was going to come, you'd be sitting at home with a shotgun. I'm ready. In Jesus' name, of course. <laughs> yeah, you'd be ready. Or you'd have 911 dialed, ready to push. I prefer the shotgun. But we don't know when the enemy is going to come. Christian, the enemy may be messing with your brain and your heart while we sit right here. The enemy may mess with you at work. The enemy may mess with you at home. The enemy desires to steal our life. What does that mean? Steal our life. To make us believe, to make us think that we have a lack of purpose. To make you feel worthless. The enemy desires for you to have no understanding or a lack of understanding of your life. The enemy wants you to walk in confusion in your life. Bewilderment. A lack of focus. In other words, you would be thinking often, why do I even exist? Why was I even born? A stealing life. That's not of Jesus. That's not of the Father. But the enemy also, Jesus says, he, he, he comes to steal and, and kill. To kill your life. Your real life. Your eternal life. He, he wants the enemy... If you have not yet become a follower of Christ, the enemy is very, very happy. And he wants you to stay not a follower of Christ. Why? So that he can puppet you around and use you to wreak havoc in people's lives. One. Secondly, hear, me, hear this very carefully. You were made in the image of God. Of God. And if the enemy, Satan, can take an image of God and keep it back away from the master, the creator, and force it, make it, if you would, to go to the pits of hell where you will burn for all eternity, the enemy feels like he is winning. The enemy comes to steal your life. Lack of purpose, lack of understanding. The enemy comes to kill your life. The short-term party life, church, is exactly that. It leaves you empty. And thirdly, Jesus says the enemy comes to destroy our life. The enemy's desire... For you to not have joy in your life, for you to not have peace in your life, the enemy gets thrilled by that. But Jesus says what? Jesus says, I have come. What does that mean? Jesus says, I've left heaven. I have left the very throne room of heaven where I have always been, <laughs> always has been, is, and always will be, right? Jesus says, I have come. I have left 
the throne of heaven and made myself 100% man and yet still maintaining 100% God, I have come and experienced the, the, the temptation. I have come and experienced the temptation that you experience. I have come, Jesus says. He can empathize with us. I have come. You, do you remember that Jesus was totally abandoned? His family turned on him. His friends turned on him and left him. And he was all alone. Jesus said, I have come. So that you may have life. What kind of life do you choose to live? Do you choose to live a life that is empty? Dry? Void? Defeated? Devastated? Do you choose to live that life? Jesus says, I have come so that you may have life. Jesus comes to bring life into us individually and corporately as a body. When we walk in the life that Jesus wants us to live, we live a life that is justified. In other words, we become a follower of Christ whenever you turn from your sins and you, 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 you ask Jesus to forgive you and to save you. You enter through the gate. Jesus says, you are justified. In other words, you are made clean, you are made pure, and you are sinless before the Father. I heard a preacher say, you've probably heard it before, I heard a preacher say years ago, just, the word justified simply defined as this, just as if I had never sinned. That's the way Jesus makes us from the inside out. Justified. He wants us to live that justified life. You have to enter the gate to bring that to pass. But Jesus came that we could have a sanctified life as well. In other words, not just the imputed righteousness that He gives us, which is awesome and that's what He wants, but He wants more for us. He wants us made in His image bought by the blood of Jesus Christ to pursue holiness. Holiness. More than just being saved. I wonder how many Christians check a box. How many followers of Christ check a box and they go, you know, I'm saved. If I was to die, I'm going to go to heaven and have eternal life. Boom. Now I can just kick back and enjoy the ride. Well, one, that makes me scratch my head and go, are you really saved? Because if you've tasted Jesus, why would you not want more? I don't get that. But there are Christians that get saved and they get satisfied and they desire to soak right where they are instead of being filled continually overflowing with the power that comes from the Spirit of God. Why would you not want that? Why, as, as your pastor, oh man, why would you not want a life that is continually being filled and overflowing with the power of the Spirit of God? Why would you not want to pursue holiness? Anything this world has to offer slows us down. Mark Batterson, he says this, 
In the beginning, God created us in His image. We have been, cre we have been, uh, we have been creating God in our image ever since. And what we end up with, as A.W. Tozer says, is a God that can never surprise us, never astonish us, and never transcend us. And if that's where you find yourself, your God is too small. You've placed Him in a box. God wants us to live an abundant life, a life that is full, a life that is overflowing with the Spirit of God, a life that is pursuing holiness, and a life that would glorify the Father. This is life. Church, this is life. And the ability to have abundant life, this is a far greater life than a life full of sin. The abundant life is far greater than keeping a list of rules and laws. Do you know that's why the entire book of Hebrews was written? Is to deal with, to deal with the people at that time who, who wanted to go back to the laws and keeping the sacrifices? You and I operate better whenever we have that pressure of, oh, I have to act just so and be just so. And what Jesus offers us is a life of freedom and a life that says, you love me. Period. Not a list of rules. You don't love a list of rules. You don't love a list of laws. You love the Father. That abundant life is a life that is full and far greater than anything that we could ever ask for, dream of, think of, or imagine in Christ. To live the abundant life, the full life, the, the life overflowing, it, it means to have a life without fear. A life full of hope in this world. A life full of healing and a life with no fear of dying. Church, <sighs> you ever have that moment you just want to jump out of your skin? I want this so bad for all of us. But you have to choose it. Not just right here at 700 Navajo. You have to choose it continually. You can't come in on Sunday morning and say, okay, I choose the abundant life here. It's a uh, quarter till 10. I'm good. I will stop choosing the abundant life at 1215. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's games. That is spiritual games with a holy God. Why would we not want this abundant life? Why would we not receive it? Because we can come, become off focus. Anybody here remember uh, the days when we had rabbit ears on our TVs? Anybody here ever, are you going to own up to putting aluminum foil on top of those rabbit ears? Okay. Anybody ever have their child go up and straighten the rabbit ears a little bit? Or did you get told to do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, some of you don't get that, but see, here's what would happen. The TV would do this, or it would do this, or it would become all fuzzy. You got that little video up? Can you show that little video right here, please? Watch what they do. Watch what they do. <laughs> and 
it's like, it's like the first one walked up to that line and said, we can't step on that. Okay, and everybody just followed suit. That's off focus. That line had nothing. That line was nothing but a distraction. But once one saw the distraction, the rest of them saw the distraction. And that's all they could focus on was the distraction. You see, we can become so off focus by a simple distraction. And that distraction can be anything. That distraction can be anything. That little fly that was buzzing around me there for just a moment. You, anybody see that fly? Under my breath, I said it out loud, but under my breath, it was just real quick, Lord rebuke you. Where'd that fly go? I don't know. You got it? Well, send him outside. <laughs> Stay focused. Don't get distracted. But that's how we deal with it. That's how we deal with distractions, folks. We deal with it spiritually. We deal with distractions spiritually. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can get you and I distracted or off focus, we begin jumping over things that don't need to be jumped over, that are not really anything at all in life. Jesus says, pursue holiness. Be holy as I am holy. Live, it, live a sanctified life before the Father. Oh yeah, but I saw this Christian do that. So? What does that Christian have to do with you living the life you're supposed to live before the Father? Are your eyes on that Christian? Or are your eyes on the one who will give you an abundant life? That Christian will not give you an abundant life. And somewhere along the line, that Christian got distracted. If anything, you may need to go to that Christian and say, Hey, you seem distracted. Why don't you come back over here to the sheep pen? It looks like you need a little nourishment. The things of Christ can become so insignificant in our lives that they are the last thing we think about if we even think about it. Oh, man, my alarm went off. I got to open up Facebook, see what happened while I was asleep. Really? Really? Is Facebook going to give you abundant life? Instagram? Twitter, whatever else it is, I don't know. It, church, the things of Christ must be first and paramount in our lives, both corporately and individually. Both corporately as a body and individually as Christians. The things of Christ. You say, what do you mean by the things of Christ? Ah, church, reading the basics, reading the Word of God, and allowing and asking the, asking the Father to speak to you by the power of His Holy Spirit through His Word. Prayer, and not just, God, uh, God bless this food, uh, 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 God help me have energy. No, I'm talking about prayer before the Father. Prayer, where you have a relationship, and it's a two-way conversation Fasting, worship, private worship, corporate worship. The things of Christ, when we get off focus, become the last thing that we think about. When we get off focus, church, we fall into sin and we allow sin to control us. When we allow sin to control our lives, it can destroy our testimony. It can hurt our witness. And it can squelch the Holy Spirit of God from working in our lives. What kind of life do you choose to live?
So you see, I think we could boil it down to just like this. I love, I love what Batterson says, and he quotes Tozer. We end up with a, a God that can never surprise us, never astonish us, and never transcend us. In other words, he's a God that we can control. A God in a box. God wants to penetrate every part of your life. But before that can happen, you have to enter through the gate. So I ask you this question. Jesus says, if you enter in through the gate, you will be saved. Would you like to be saved today? Would you like to enter in through the gate? Would you like to become a follower of Christ? Would you like to become part of the family? Part of who Jesus wants you to be? In just a moment, you're going to have that opportunity because we're going to, we're, in a minute, Deborah and some of the folks are going to come and they're going to lead us in a song and we're going to stand up and we're going to pray and as soon as I'm through praying is your opportunity to step out immediately. There's going to be a, a, a man and woman right over here and be a man and woman right over there. And those are our deacons and their wives. And they're going to be waiting on you. And they're going to be saying, hey, why'd you come, why'd you come forward? You, you can say this very simply to them. I want, in, I want to come through the gate. I want to be saved. I want to become a follower of Jesus. This is your opportunity to do that here in just a moment. And they're going to help you. And they, they, they're, going to, they're going to be very attentive to you. And they're going to help you. They're going to pray with you. But hear me. Maybe some of you are sitting here today and you go, Mike, I, I've got, I, I know that I'm in Christ. I, I know that my sins have been forgiven, but I've never been baptized. I need to be baptized. Because I accepted Christ here and I haven't been baptized since that point. I got baptized back here. But I accepted Christ here. I know I did. And now I'm here. And I need, I need, I need to be baptized. I need to make that right. If that's you, then do the same thing. Please just come straight up and say, hey, I need to be baptized. If you're here this morning, you go, I, yeah, I haven't had a church family or a church home in forever. Would, you, would God have you join us? Would this be the place that you're supposed to be a part of the family? A member? Is this what God would have for you? If so, then when you stand up right after I pray, it's your opportunity to just like the others, step out and come down and take these by the hand and say, I, I want to become a member of this church, a part of this family. But Christian, hear me. Hear me very, very carefully. If you find yourself like those silly cows, distracted, not living the full and abundant life that God would have you to live, not living the life to the fullest, repent. Repent. You say, what does that look like to repent? Acknowledge before God that you've got distracted. God, I've gotten distracted by this and this and this. I turn away from that and I ask you to forgive me for being distracted. And I turn back to you. And God, I ask you to fill me overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit. I want to live an abundant life. God, I choose to live an abundant life. from this day on. Would you do that with the Father today? Stand with me and we're going to pray. With your heads bowed. My friend, if you've gotten distracted,
and you need to refocus. I want you to be the first one down here. As a child of God, whether it's kneeling or standing, right here at the front, or maybe praying with some of our friends to my left or my right, or even with me, whatever. I want you to be the first one down. Just to say, I, to, to confess before the Father, I, I've gotten distracted, I turn from it, I repent of it. I confess it as sin. And today, Father, I refocus. Won't you come? Father in heaven, some are going to come and become followers of yours today. They're going to enter through the gate for the very first time. I praise you for them. Others, Father, are going to come and uh, follow you in baptism. Others to unite with this church. Others still, O oh Lord God, just to acknowledge they've gotten distracted and it's time to repent of that. They just didn't even realize they got distracted. They were just following everybody else. Been there, Father, you know I have. It's by your grace I'm not there at this moment. Thank you. Father, may we refocus ourselves by the power of your Holy Spirit today and ask you to fill us with the abundant life. Ask you to fill us, O oh Father, with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you come now as we sing? Come now in Jesus' name. Come quickly. As we seek your face, may we know
us with the offering would you come on down this is uh, our opportunity to continue to worship um, as you receive this plate if you're not a member of our church we just simply ask that you just pass it on down uh, it's our opportunity as church members as a body to give a tithe or give an offering and so that's what we're doing we're continuing to worship if you're a guest there's no expectation uh, for you to do anything other than just to pass it on down and uh, to allow us to continue to worship, all right? Father in heaven, um, God, as we tithe, uh, it's all yours, 100% of it's yours. You've just asked us and designed where we can show our love and our honor to you by giving some back. And so, Lord, we worship you as we give a tithe as we give an offering as as we give to you and we give joyfully freely and lovingly bless it multiple times over and God your scripture promises that you would bless us in return that's not why we give but we thank you for that and we know it's truth in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Amen. What joy. What fun. We start a series on the book of Philippians. You know where the book of Philippians is? Can you see it? I want you to start reading it, if you would. Add it to your reading plan. Do something. We're going to start that next Sunday. And uh, we're going to run through the book. So uh, you pray for me as I continue to unpack that. Uh, I don't want us to be in Philippians in 2021, uh, which could happen. But uh, you, you pray for me that I would have that, just that sensitivity to the Holy Spirit to know when to break and when to pick up. All right, would you do that for me? I appreciate it. Love you guys. If you're a guest here with us, we'd love, Cindy and I would love to meet you. I'm, we're going to be straight out those doors, straight down the first cafe area. That's where I'm headed right now. And I do hope to see you down there as our guest. We got a gift from you or for you from our church. All right. So I'll see you down there in a few moments. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Love you.